Krishna is for Dhamma, Pagate, Tamaganadi Bisaha, Kalanda Sadha Shamish, Parana Kona Dodata, Nadai Nadan Maskichan, the Ramchaivam and the Rotama, Devim Salasatim Biasam, Tito Jayam Udir Ayat. The Bhagavatam is as brilliant as the sun, he is arisen just after the departure of Lord, Lord Krishna, accompanied with knowledge, religion, etc. Persons who have lost their vision due to the dense darkness of the age of Kali should get light out of this Purana. Before beginning our study of the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is our very means of conquest, we should first offer our respects to the personality of God in Narayan, the Nari Narayan Rishi, the supermost human being, the goddess of living with the Saraswati, the author Srila Vyasadeva, and my spiritual master Srila Prabhupada. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya I apologize for my voice uh, it's one of the many things outside my control. Actually, the idea that anything is under our control is quite an illusion, except our choices that we have control over. So uh, we'll see how far I get till the voice fades out. We're on, assuming we're in the same universe, uh, Canto 3, Chapter 20, Text 25. Sa. Upavraja Varadam Prapanarti Haram Harim Anugrahaya Bhaktanam Anurupatma Darshanam Sa Upavraja Varadam Prapanarti haram harim Anugrahaya bhaktanam Anurupat madarshanam So upavraja varadam Prapanarti haram harim <coughs> Anugrahaya bhaktanam <coughs> Anurupat Madarshanam So Upavraja Varadam Prapanarti Haram Harim Anugrahaya Bhaktanam Anurupat Madarshanam Anugrahaya Bhaktan All right. 
Before I forget, I was a bhakta here. Actually, I'm still trying to become a bhakta. Uh, in 1970, and Prabhupada was staying here. He was working on the Nectar of Devotion and the Krishna book, two books at once. And his system was that he was inviting temple presidents from all over the world, from Australia, from Europe, from you know, India. And New Dwarka was the flagship of ISKCON. And Prabhupada was teaching how to do deity worship, how to do book distribution, how to cook. And I just wanted to say, I remember what it was like then. And I just wanted to say, I am certain how pleased Prabhupada is with New Dwarka. The standard of the deity worship, the powerful book distribution, the expert management. I mean, we could go down the list, Ratha Yatra. They are world-class standard. And that doesn't happen easily. And probably Prabhupada's request to us was if you can't expand it, at least maintain it. And, you know, we've been able to expand it by, by his grace. But I just wanted to say that it, it's a wonderful thing and it's not easy. And Prabhupada would be very pleased because he gave his life to ISKCON. There's no question about it. He gave his life on, on his disappearance bed in Vrindavan. He was speaking. He, they, they asked Prabhupada when Prabhupada was leaving USA for his last time in the USA. And his health was failing and everyone knew it. Didn't want to admit it, but knew it. And Prabhupada was, it's a long story, but the short, because I want to get to the verse. But the, um, the devotees said, Prabhupada, why don't you go to Gita Nagari? Please go to, they called it uh, New Barsan, I think it was called at that time. But why don't you go to, please go to Gita Nagari, you rest, this and that, you know. And he said, I want to fight like Arjuna to my last breath. And you see Prabhupada on his disappearance bed, literally translating to his last breath. And if you read that first section of the 10th canto, Brahma Mohan Lila, it, it's clear, it, it, there's no, you can't tally the two things. He's lied. If we have time, remind me after, afterwards about Dr. Karana, uh, who went to see Prabhupada in his last few days. And he said it was like seeing Bhishma on the bed of arrows. Anyway, I don't want to get distracted. The, but the point is that Prabhupada gave his life, his literally his last breath. And to see his sons and daughters and his grandsons and granddaughters maintaining this new dwarf, he loved new dwarf. It would be, it's very pleasing. So, Hare Krishna to you. Okay, so the word for word, Sa, <clears throat> Lord Brahma, Upavraja, <clears throat> approaching, Vadadam, the bestower of all boons, Prapana, of those taking shelter at his lotus feet, Arti, distress, Haram, who dispels, Harim, Lord Shri Hari, Anugrahaya, for showing mercy, <clears throat> Bhaktanam, to his devotees, Anarupa, in suitable forms, Atmadarshanam, who manifests himself. Translation, he approached the personality of Godhead, who bestows all boons. Who is the he in this verse? Lord Brahma, and what's happening? Huh? Somebody in the back? Yeah, he's running away from the demons, and he's looking for shelter. He's in big trouble. Okay, just so we have the, and it's the conversation with Vidura and Maitreya. Okay, did we finish the translation? Yeah, okay, I'm gonna start again. He approached the personality of Godhead, 
who bestows all boons and who dispels the agony of his devotees and of those who take shelter of his lotus feet. He manifests innumerable, his innumerable transcendental forms for the satisfaction of his devotees. All say you so. He approached the personality of Godhead, who bestows all boons, and who dispels the, dispels the agony of his devotees, and of those who take shelter of his lotus feet. He manifests his innumerable transcendental forms for the satisfaction of the devotees. Purport. Here the word bhaktanam anarupat madarshanam means the personality of God that manifests his multiple forms according to the desire of his devotees. For example, Hanumanji, Vajranaji, wanted to see the form of the Lord as the personality of Godhead Ramchandra, whereas other Vaishnavas wanted to see the form of Radha Krishna, and still other devotees want to see him in the form of Lakshmi Narayan. The Mayavad philosophers think that although these forms are all assumed by the Lord, just as the devotees desire to see him, actually he's impersonal. From Brahma Samhita, however, we can understand that this is not so. For the Lord has multiforms. It is said in the Brahma Samhita, Advaita Achyuta, Ananta Rupam. Uh, the Lord does not appear before the devotees because of the devotees' imagination. Brahma Samhita further explains that the Lord has innumerable forms. Ramari Murti Sukala Nivamana, teach them. He exists in millions and millions of forms. There are 8,400,000 species of living entities. But the incarnations of the Lord are innumerable. In the Bhagavatam, it is stated that as waves in the ocean, uh, waves in the sea cannot be counted, but appear and disappear continually, the incarnations and forms of the Lord are innumerable. A devotee is attached to a particular form, and it, it is that form which he worships. We have just described the first appearance of the Boar within the universe. There are new universes, and somewhere or other, the board form is now existing. Prabhupada called it a transcendental roadshow. As he goes from one universe to another universe, it's to all the different forms of traveling. All the forms of the Lord are eternal. It is the devotee's inclination to worship a particular form. In other words, the form is not generated from the devotee's imagination. The form exists, and we're all individuals. We all have a personalities. I'll tell you something that was a real, it was an eye-opener for me. I was mentioned to Sovas. Um, when Prabhupada was staying upstairs, he used to, um, uh, they would bring up the four o'clock afternoon, Vaikalya, I forget what that RT is called. They would bring him up the, and he would take a little fruit and usually some grain, a little cookie or something, and some fresh juice, you know, to revive him for the afternoon. And one, one day, the offering, we would all, brahmacharis, we'd all stay at the bottom of the steps. And when Nanda Kumar was Prabhupada's servant at the time, when he would come down with the plate, you know, Prabhupada's remnants, you can imagine we were all young, like you guys. Let it be a lesson to you. This is where you're going. Use your time wisely. So uh, the, uh, we'd all just pounce on Nanda Kumar and, you know, for a little, anything, Mahaprasad, Maha Mahaprasadam. So in this particular time, there were these uh, sugar cookies that, that had peanut butter frosting. And Prabhupada had licked off the frosting and left the cookies. So you can imagine that, you know, we were all over those cookies. You're lucky if you got a crumb and, and a black eye and a scrum to get them, you know. So the, uh, but the blissful thing is Nanda Kumar asked Prabhupada, and told us later on, he asked Prabhupada, Prabhupada, you didn't like the cookies? Because he licked off the frosting and left the cookies. Prabhupada said, we all have our own taste. And the idea that even in liberation, we all have personalities, we all have natures, we're all individuals. We've got, you know, tendencies and inclinations and some people are soft and mild, some people are, you know. So uh, it was nice to see that, that even in liberation, that's in fact, in the liberated state is when our real personality comes out. Whatever we've got now 
is all conditioning and left over from who knows how many lifetimes. But when we're actually, all of this is off, like you take the mud off a diamond, then you've got the diamond. So it's not that we have become less of a personality or become a, some kind of blank slate or a quivering atom of light or whatever, you know. No, our real personality comes out. Okay, sorry about that, but I didn't want to forget. Um, in a verse in the Ramayana, Hanuman, the great devotee of Lord Ram, said, quote, I know that there's no difference between Sita Ram and Lakshmi Narayan forms of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But nevertheless, the form of Rama and Sita has absorbed my affection and love. Therefore, I want to see the Lord in the form of Ram and Sita, end quote. Similarly, the Gaudiya Vaishnavas love the Gaudiya Vaishnava loves the forms of Radha Krishna and Krishna and Rukmini in Dwarka. Prabhupada says it's right there. Uh, the words Bhaktanam Anarupatma Darshanam mean that the Lord is always pleased to favor the devotees in a particular form in which the devotee wants to worship and render service unto him. In this verse it's stated that Brahma approached the Supreme. Where am I? I, hold, hold on, hold on. I lost, no, 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 no. My, my little brain's got to catch up. In this verse, it's stated that Brahma approached Hari, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This form of the Lord is Shri Dakshai Vishnu. Whenever there's some trouble and Brahma has to approach the Lord, he can approach Shri Dakshai Vishnu. And it is the grace of the Lord that whenever Lord Brahma approaches about disturbances in the universe, the Lord gives him relief in so many ways. Om Gena Tamaranda Sya Gena Gena Salake Jokshu Shrimadatangena Tazari Shri Gurave Namaha Just from this last sentence, it is the grace of the Lord that whenever Burma approaches about disturbances in the universe, the Lord gives him relief in so many ways. So, Lord Burma, the head of our Sampradaya, he's a devotee, he's doing his devotional service, and yet there's disturbances. Should we be surprised that we little jivas, there's this world, we've got the whole thing backwards. We're thinking that things should go smoothly because I'm a devotee. And that the abnormality is sometimes there's disturbance. It's, it's the lingering inclination that this world is actually an enjoyable place. Even as devotees, we've got that kind of in the back of our head that this, you know, things should go nicely. And every now and then there's a problem, and why, and Krishna, please help me, you know? But the fact of the matter is, this world is always turbulent. It is a forest fire, samsara dava. Actually, those disturbances, like Queen Kunti prays, prays, it's an opportunity to remember Krishna, to take care of Krishna. Otherwise, we become fat and lazy, and, you know, and Krishna gives us a little poke. Prabhupada said three reasons devotees suffer. Prabhupada said devotees suffer. Um, maybe there's, and then we, uh, the, here's the reasons devotees suffer. One reason is it's a token reaction for a past experience. You know, something we've done wrong. Prabhupada said we should get, you know, hit by a wrecking ball and we bump our head on a, instead we bump our head on a cabinet or something. It's a token reaction. Another reason devotees suffer is to set an example for others. And if you think about it, I mean, you know, you're out on book distribution, you're having a tough day, you're, you know, you're not feeling well, and it's too hot, this and that. Prabhupada was doing book distribution at tea stalls in Delhi and passed out with heat stroke. I mean, you think about every austerity we've done. Tamal Krishna Maharaj, and I want to get back to the heart of the thing, but Tamal Krishna Maharaj told me he was managing in India. Managing in India was tough. Prabhupada said the devotees would say to him, I'll serve you in heaven, I'll serve you in hell, but not India. It was tough. It was, it was tough. So Tamal Krishna says the GBC was, you know, I mean, the poor man, everything was. Prabhupada asked each temple to send a devotee to help. And many temple presidents thought, well, I'm not sending him or her you know, she's the head pujari, he's doing that. And they would usually send somebody who, on one hand, it wasn't a real loss. 
So you can imagine what the, what the crew that, there are also some great heroes, there's no question about it. Read Gary Rashmarsh's book, Dancing White Elephants, which is coming soon. But the point I wanted to make is that it was tough. And Tamal wanted to come back and join his friend Vishnu John Swami on Radhadamadar and preach in colleges. And so he said, Prabhupada, he said, I, I can't do this anymore. It's very hard. Prabhupada said, hard for me too. He said, you know, Prabhupada, but, but the, it's so hard to get the devotees to cooperate. It's like herding cats. Prabhupada said, me too. That was his experience. He said, Prabhupada, I, I, sometimes I don't even have time to make it for the evening RT. I'm sitting in the courthouse trying to get the permit for Jew. He, that, 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 you know, Prabhupada said, me too. He said, Prabhupada, sometimes I can't even chant my rounds. I can't think, I can't concentrate on my rounds. Prabhupada said, me too. <laughs> so Tamal said, you know, how could I, to his credit, Tamal said, you know, here's Prabhupada carrying all this weight. How can I, you know, I can't just give it up and go off and be a play in the hand of God at the colleges in America. I've got to stay and help Srila Prabhupada. So it's a difficult place. This world is a difficult place. And we should expect that. And, but we should see that this is a chance to remember Krishna. This is a chance. How do you make a knife sharp? Hmm? You don't have any Boy Scouts here? Girl Scouts? Ah, you, what did you, what did you say to do? Yeah, you have a stone. You call it a wedding stone. You take a stone and a little water. Sh 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 sh. So by rubbing on stone, the thing becomes sharp. So our surrender to Krishna, our dependence on Krishna, our confidence in Krishna, it comes when you're put in difficulty. You have to surrender, you have to think, you have to tolerate, you have to grow. That's what it's all about. So, but back to the, just a, a little cleanup here, or a little uh, uh, basic foundational philosophy. It's talking about the multi-forms of Krishna. Prabhupada talks and he, and, he, and he takes a nod to the impersonalists who think, okay, it's, they say it's like water. The absolute truth is like water. And you've got different jars and containers. And you pour it into the jar, you pour it into the container, and it takes the shape of the container. It's actually water. This is not right, by the way, don't, you know. But it, it, it's formless, but it takes the form for a particular purpose. That's the, one of the impersonal premises. But the Vaishnavas say, no, 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 no. That form is eternal. So, well, how can that be? How can something, how can God be present everywhere? This is Mahaprabhu's Achinta Beta Beta Tadva, the culmination of all four Sampradayas. Like all the rivers pour into the ocean. All the different Acharyas of the four primary, Ramanuja Acharya, Madhvacharya, Vishnu Swami, and Nimbarka. All four, all of their teachings pour in to Mahaprabhu's Achinta Beta Beta, Dvaita, Advaita, all of those are, are perfectly understood in a chinta beta beta tattva. Uh, simultaneously one and different. So that, that applies to so many things, having a form and not having a form. Well, that's just, what does that mean? It's like, what is the sound of one hand clapping? You're trying to bend my mind around contradictions. What is something that we see almost every day in Southern California that is both present everywhere and has a form and location. Who's, what's that? Oh, my hearing's going to, I thought you said thumb, and I was trying to, well, no, son. And how is it, just help me with seamless logic. The thing is, they throw out all this stuff, but how is it logically consistent? that the Krishna's Purnam, Om Purnam, Da Purnam, Da. If, if God is complete, how can the cause, the source, the designer of unlimited suns that are both present, you know, localized and shining everywhere, but that cause, him, Krishna, 
can't be present everywhere? How can he create unlimited sons, but he can't do what the unlimited sons he created? I heard Prabhupada say just the other day that, you know, Krishna married 16,108 wives. You know, what? You know, Prabhupada said, but, they, but when they read that Krishna expands into everyone's heart, they don't have a problem with that as super soul. Prabhupada said, what's 16,108? He's in everybody's heart. So to come out of the heart and manifest in front in 16,108, what's the big deal? He's in the heart of every living entity. So the impersonal, it's not, it's not consistent. It's not actually logical. You have to start from the conclusion of Shastra. And Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati talk says, you can only understand God once you, you have your beginning premise has to be that the Supreme has achinta, unlimited, inconceivable potencies. Well, he couldn't do that, and he can't do that. Well, no. You have to start with the premise that the absolute, the Supreme Personality of Godhead has inconceivable potencies. So, now, Well, I'm looking at the time. The, it describes how Krishna comes just in a form to satisfy the devotees. I was driving by a church, and they have, these, often they have those sign out in front that gives the name of the, the theme for the Sunday talk. Probably like this. So I was driving by a church, and the, the, you know, the signboard out in front said, what a friend we have in Jesus. Yeah, such a friend, they nailed him to the cross, but that's another story. The, but what a friend, and I was thinking, what a friend we have in Krishna. Imagine, I mean, Krishna comes, you've got, you know, the queens of Dwarka, they want to see him in a particular way. Kunti wants to see him as her beloved nephew. You've got Mother Yasoda wants to see him as a baby. Bhishma Dev, he doesn't want to see that. He wants to see Krishna angry and fighting as the best of warriors. You've got Hanuman, it says here, wants to see him as Lord Ram. You've got Chaitanya Mahaprabhu when he was talking to Murari Gupta and saying how, you know, that Krishna is the supreme and Ram is him. Like that. From one candle, you can light so many candles, but the initial can, cam, uh, candle, Adi Purusha, that's Krishna. And uh, in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, the verse says that uh, Marari, and he was saying you should be worshipping Krishna, chanting Krishna's name, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, to Marari Gupta. And Marari Gupta's mind was a little bent, a little changed. You can imagine Mahaprabhu working you over. So his, his mind was a little changed. And all night long, he couldn't sleep. You know why? He began to think, how can I give up my Lord Ram? Raghunath, I've sold my head to Lord Raghunath, how can I give it up? And when he met Mahaprabhu the next morning, he thought about committing suicide. Mahaprabhu's asked him to do this, to, you know, you, you said you should be worshipped, focused on Krishna. He couldn't do it. And he went back and told Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, I, I don't know, I, I, I can't do it. Anyone know what happened when he told Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that? I cannot take my head away from Raghunath, from Lord Ram. Lord Chaitanya embraced him. I heard Prabhupada tell me, you're right. He was completely pleased. He embraced him. He said, you are the real lover of Krishna. So just think about it. Huh? I mean, how many of us, all of us, at some point in time, have prayed very deeply to Lord Nishingadev? And he's the perfect form. I mean, we could spend some time on some stories of Lord Nishingadev. I mean, He's the perfect form to reciprocate. When you're in anxiety and fear, and you think about little Prahlad, five-year-old boy, completely defenseless, truth to power, calling his father, doesn't call him father, says, oh, best of the demons. You know, I mean, it's, it's pretty blissful. I mean, it's completely blissful. So think about living in a, a world, and Krishna talks about in Bhagavad Gita. He says, you know, that uh, Arjuna says he doesn't want to kill 
his relatives and all this and that. And then Krishna responds, but the, and Prabhupada describes in the purport, you know, if it's all chemicals, it's all happening by chance, it's just a bag of chemicals, who cares? What's the difference? Imagine living in a world, we are living in a world, where that's the general view. People are lonely and alone and frustrated. It's rough out there. And, and who do they... Like I said, what a friend we have in Jesus. We know, we live in an animated world. We know that Krishna's behind everything, Krishna's sustaining everything, Krishna's seeing us. If there's some difficulty, he's testing us to make us better devotees. Oh, I, I didn't finish the three reasons. One is uh, a token reaction for, you know, for something misdeed in the past. The other one is to give an example to others. You look at Prabhupada's life, you look at the, the uh, you know, he teaches others how devotees surrender to Krishna, how they depend on Krishna, you know. Anyway, it's not exactly the same. I was driving my car to a wedding. Uh, this is some years ago in Laguna Beach. And it just started to rain, which is one of the most dangerous times on the road because all the oil comes up and it's a slick surface. surface. So I was driving along, I was late, so driving a little too fast. I don't recommend it. And a truck pulled right in front of me. Didn't see me, I must have been in the blind spot. And I jerked my wheel so I didn't run into it. And my car went into a, com I spun around three times. Like I was going 75 miles an hour. And my car spun around, it was just like the movies. Everything slowed down. I was, you know, I was looking backwards, you know, turning, looking at traffic coming, cars whizzing by. I smacked into the middle, spun around, smacked into the other side, you know. Somehow or other, I was, un, I was unheard. I remember you know, <laughs> the window was busted out. I couldn't open the door. I climbed out the window. I dressed like this, you know. And this guy, it's, you know, a bunch of cars stopped. And so he looked at my car, it was completely smashed, it was total on each side. Uh, by Krishna's grace, I was, uh, I remember, I, my prayer shows the depth of my realization. My prayer was, I said, Krishna, just, I said, kill me. Please don't cripple me. Don't, don't leave me, you know, just a burden on everybody. Just get it over with, you know. And uh, <laughs> I climbed out unscathed. And this guy had parked his car to, you know, assist what had happened looked at my car completely smashed, looked at me, dressed you know, like, and he said, what are you? I said, I'm a Hare Krishna monk. He said, damn, I'm a believer, you know, <laughs> after seeing what had happened, you know. I said, well, it's a, new pre it's a new preaching platform. I don't recommend it, you know. But the, that we have our Krishna. And, and he takes a form, Krishna's, you know, where is God? I was saying at the, at the Sunday talk, that's not the question. Prabhupada said, show me God. Prabhupada said, the question is, why can't you see God? And to be living in a sterile, stagnant, the universe is silent. You can offer your praise, but there's nobody out there. And we're just chemicals, and it's all, all it is is social biology. You know, I want to conquer you or get in this position so that my DNA can continue. It's a horrible world to live in. And they do live in it. And it makes people lonely. It makes them angry. It makes them paranoid. It makes them frustrated. But here it's being described the beauty of that we live in a world where God is present and where he's doing everything he can Prabhupada, you know, yeyatam mam prapadjante, as they surrender, I reciprocate. We all know that verse, you know. You take one step to me, Krishna takes, we take one step to him, Krishna takes one step to us. Prabhupada said, no, I was sitting in the room. He said, no, no, it's not a one-to-one -one ratio. It's a one-to-ten ratio. People say, where's God? <laughs> I just, anyway, uh, you know, why doesn't he just, why all this cat and mouse? Just come down here and straighten it out. You know? Come on. Well, think about it. Krishna's coming in so many different forms. He sends so many saintly people. 
He sends Bhagavad Gita. He sends so many Shastra. I mean, he's doing his part. What, what's the problem in this equation? Like, frankly, I have good doctors. I have good doctors. What's the problem? I mean, other than old age and time taking its toll. I'm not a good patient. <laughs> I mean, I'll be honest. I mean, I'm trying. But, you know, I got, whatever, I got all my excuses. But the, it's not the fault of the doctor. It's not the fault of the medicine. It's the fault. I'm not f doing it right. That's why you're getting, you know. So in the same way, if you think about it, we should take deep confidence that I've got my Krishna and he's helping me. And he's, you know, and I'm going back to Godhead. I don't know when, you know. What is it? Is it uh, Mukunda? You know who said he would associate with the dry scholars? And so Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wouldn't let him come. And then he, he said, you know, will he ever let me have his association again? Mahaprabhu, tell, tell him in a, in a, what is it, a thousand years or whatever it is, a million years. And what was the reaction of uh, Mukunda? He said, hey, there's a guarantee. I just have to tick it off, you know. I'll, there's a guarantee. I, he'll see me again. So, I guess because of the time we can stop there. But we have a choice. We can live in a dry, sterile, frustrating world where there's no real love, there's no real truth, nothing's absolute. There's no absolute reality, there's no truth. It's all subjective truth. It's all, you know, what do they call it? Situational ethics. I mean, it's a horrible world to live in. So, and we can realize it. Well, I wanted to read something from Prabhupada Saraswati in his hundred, hundred verses to uh, glorifying Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and we'll end at that. Um, Okay, where is it? To the, this is from Prabhupada Saraswati, uh, these hundred verses glorifying Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, like I said. Quote, to the degree that we surrender to Lord Chaitanya's service, to that degree we gain the qualification for service to Shurmati Radharani's lotus feet in Braj. People are looking for something esoteric. They're, you know, sitting under a bush in Radhakun, dressed in a sari, you know, whatever they're doing, you know. But... I'm going to say it again. You want, uh, you want a secret? How? Because what is the apex? Especially for Gaudiya Vaishnavas. Prabhupada says here, the Gaudiya Vaishnavas, followers of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, are generally speaking, try uh, attain Madhurya Ras. Certainly the worship of Radha Krishna and Vrindavan. So, and not that there's a the hierarchy of which Ras and Vrindavan is better. So, but here it says, to the degree that we surrender to Lord Chaitanya's service, to that degree we gain qualifications for the service to Srimati Radharani's lotus feet in Baraj. This is the jet, you know, what do you, what do you call the express lane to service in Vrindavan under Srimati Radharani's lotus feet. You serve Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So now we've got the last, I don't know, our marathon in San Diego is going to... January 2nd, I don't know. Remember the old days? We used to have the Panchatatwa Marathon. Started in October, October, November, December, January, February. It was five months, you know? So, um, but it's a chance. It's a, you know, we should be, everybody, you know, if you hear the blue, what is it they have? They have a, what is it called? Black Thursday or whatever it is. Yeah, Black Friday, what, the day after Thanksgiving, you know, you get all the deals. And then they've got, I think it's something Cyber Monday or whatever, get all the deals. I mean, everybody, you just say, here's a deal, and everybody, they knock their grandmother over to get that new, <laughs> I mean, you know, whatever it is. There's always, they always have some fight. Have you noticed that? Oh, they're fighting over the last Xbox, poking the guy in the eyes. You know, it's, it's vicious out there in so many ways. But everyone's looking for a deal. Looking for, give me a deal. Uh, you know, Kali Yoga, we're lazy. I want a deal. Well, here's a deal. Here's how to attract Krishna's mercy. Here's an opportunity. Here's the blue light special in the spiritual world, you know. Distribute books. Please, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Krishna intervenes. 
Krishna cares. Krishna's working hard. I mean, for Krishna, it's all play. Don't get me wrong. But he's taking all these different forms. He has all these different leelas. We daydream. I was daydreaming the other day. If only, I saw it was $540 million was the lottery. We don't gamble. For, you know, whatever. If Krishna wants to give us money, he'll give us money. We just serve his lotus feet. But I did stop for a minute and think, what would I do if I had $540 million? I was thinking, I would give a lot of it to Swavas, to tell you the truth. Because <laughs> I know he'd use it wisely, you know. And I'd get two for one. I'd get the BBT, and I'd get Rip Mini Door Kadish to load his feet. I was like, well, that's something I've got. I, I, you know, I took off. I you know, almost hit a car. I was thinking about what I'm going to do. You know, and I was quickly I was brought back to reality. I, I'm a poor sannyasi, but I've got some attachment to Parappa, so that's good. But the, but the point I was going to make is we daydream. But Krishna thinks of something. Prabhupada says in the teachings of Lord Chaitanya, Krishna thinks of something. It's a whole pastime. It's a whole, you know, he thinks of being a Kshatriya prince. He becomes, you know, Krishna in work, and it's a whole pastime. He thinks of this. He wants to cheat. He comes as Vamana Dave. It's just fantastic. So my point is, Krishna is doing, he's working hard to deliver us. Krishna intervenes at every moment. He's in our heart. He's as the external, as the, he's the Cheta Guru, and then he's the Diksha Guru, he's the Siksha Guru. He's putting us through all kinds of circumstances. I was saying the other day about kneading clay so you get the bubbles out, so when you can fire it, it doesn't crack. So he's training us. He's working hard to deliver the living entities, and he intervenes in this world all the time. I mean, it will, I guess we'll end. So the point is that Krishna is doing his part. He's trying. He intervenes. He's involved. So if we try to serve his lotus feet, if we try to serve the Sankatan mission, especially now we've got a golden opportunity with the marathon, then you, then you, the door for Krishna's mercy pouring on our head so that we can... Prabhupada said, you know, in the, in the Bhagavatam, Naramuni, when he leaves his body, first he's the, the uh, servant, the maid servant's son. And then it says, like lightning and illumination occur simultaneously. Prabhupada said that you'll close your eyes at the end of death. You'll wake up. There will be Krishna. There will be the coward boys, or whatever it will be in Vrindavan. And they'll say, come on. And you just fall in. You don't need an introductory manual, you know, whatever, you know. Who, oh, who are you? What's your name? You better get a name tag. You're new here, you know. You just fall in and off you go. What, I mean, so here's an opportunity. Distribute books. Serve Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's movement. It's the secret pathway to Braj and the lotus feet of Srimati Radharani. Okay, thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Hey, Goldman.